We're making history. For more than 50 years in this country, there has been no teleprompter free news. Why is that important? I got stacks of news articles here, research that I've done, my crew's done. I'm here, a man with the information, with the crew, with the reporters, bringing you our analysis, citizen analysis, totally slanted and proud of it, slanted towards private property, individual freedom, a wild, wild west worldwide. Like we want to take 1776, not just worldwide, but galaxy-wide. That's what we're into. Freedom and more of it and more of it still. Well, this is no holds barred. We're going to be here for a long time tonight, but it's going to move fast. We have got Max Kaiser joining us with a big, extensive interview on a host of issues we're going to be talking to him about. You name it, it's coming up. All those bank fees that are piling up in the cashless society slave grid. I'm also going to break some of that down coming up before he joins us. Uh, we've got that uh, stock trader, uh, Alessio Rastani, who made all the big news saying that Goldman Sachs rules the world. He's going to be joining us coming up tonight. But first, first, let's get to the news and a bunch of special reports we have coming up tonight. We've got an autistic child and his father we talked to it in the Fed in Dallas. That's coming up. We've got a, a report on the bizarre very dark, kind of snuff filmish murals that are all over the Denver airport. We've sent our reporters there. You keep asking us about it for years. We've been there. We tried to contact the artist to get answers. That's coming up. It's a jam-packed transmission. I mean, I gotta say it. Uh, it was supposed to be a 30-minute show, and we've got stations and people already want to pick it up, but I'm sorry, it's just gonna have to stay prisonplanet.tv for a while because we're bringing a lot to the game. We wanna stay on the field. Kind of like that song where uh, he's racing, he's racing, he's plotting the course, he's racing, racing, riding on his horse. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. It's the fact that we are into this, and I'm so proud of my little bitty crew, always bringing more to the table, just like I do, never shutting up, because we got passion, we're real. I'm not taking some federal talking point and repeating it and regurgitating it and manipulating the population. I'm here letting it all hang out. Weeknight, 7 o'clock. And it's your subscriptions to PrisonPlanet.tv where you see it first at 7 p.m. and everything else is at PrisonPlanet.tv that funds it virally then spilling like a, like a virus busting open a cell and billions of more viruses of liberty spreading out into the system-wide system. It is you that's scaring the establishment. Make no mistake. We're just the tip of the spear. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into the news. You know, it came out uh, today that VeriSign, this has been the internet kill switch plan all along. It's not going to be total internet kill. It's going to be selective. We've already seen the Justice Department, same folks that ship guns into Mexico, cocaine back in. Oh, yeah, they've been caught. Fast and Furious goes really deep. Uh, they have said that, that they want to be able to just kill sites individually, and the feds are already doing it. And so VeriSign says worldwide, if the UN or a private group or organization ask to be able to shut your website down, no judge, no jury, no nothing, it's shut down, it's gone, goodbye, bye-bye. That's the internet kill switch uh, selectively whenever the gods of the New World Order uh, want to do that. But the good news is we're going to expose them. And as they attempt to censor people, it only causes folks to look for the censored information that much more. You see, freedom has a posse. Liberty's infective. And it's only when you bullies get out of control that good people go ahead and stand up and stomp your ass. I'm sorry, just thought I'd add that. But this whole VeriSign situation and the internet kill switch and the cybersecurity takeover system, that's only one small piece of the larger system. So, so that's what I want to talk about with you tonight, right now, is just a snapshot, and we'll do further pieces on this in the future, of what the cashless society means to our culture and to our society. It, when everything is cashless, when everything is digital, it allows them to surveil what you're doing, track what you're doing, but also tax you, and also increase prices on things that they know people absolutely want and are demanding. You know, you've seen Bank of America and now a bunch of other banks announce that they're going to start charging you for checking accounts. Just two years ago, over 75% were free checking accounts. Now it's, uh, what, 45% 
in 2011. Even though they're using your money, for every dollar you have in the bank, they can loan out 10 or more. The big bankers don't need that anymore because they've got the tens of trillions of your taxpayer bailout money that they're going to loan you at interest. They don't need your money in the bank anymore. That's why Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and others are laying off customer service people. Service sector. They only use the crony capitalist free market system to destroy our society. Now they're done with that. They're moving on to the post-industrial phase right now. And we've put together some uh, a montage of articles here where they're trying to force people on to automatic transfers, automatic payments of their paycheck. And again, as everything phases from cash uh, being basically demonized and obsolete over to digital, over to cashless, now they can add all the fees for using a debit card, $5, or add it for using a credit card, $5, uh, or add it for having a bank account. And this is a system where there's no underground market, there's no basic freedom, there's, there's no anonymity or privacy, it's total and complete control over the whole society. And guess who uh, is pushing uh, the banker dream? Herman Cain. I learned, we'll pause it right there for now, I learned 16 years ago that the Federal Reserve had a plan and was promoting through Federal Reserve pitchmen and economists to have a sales tax and a VAT on top of an income tax. And then they had Herman Cain, former head of the Federal Reserve, one of their spokesmen, out of Kansas City, promoted for years, and they had Neil Bortz promoted, but always promised we'll get rid of the income tax too. Well, now they've admitted they're going to come in with two new taxes, VAT and sales tax. Same thing, the European Central Bank, owned by the same private bankers that our Federal Reserve is, are now bringing in. This is a pure austerity tax paid directly to the bankers. Remember, they started the income tax in 1913 only for the top 1%. They used that 99 versus the 1% propaganda again. But then by World War II, it was an automatic withholding, but it was only a temporary war tax. But it wasn't temporary. And once they cut the income tax down to 9%, then they could jack it up later. They could jack up the VAT. They could jack up the sales tax. But more importantly, a federal surveillance over all manufacturing, all value added, I mean, in England, it's over 20% now. In Europe, same thing. They're just wanting to raise it now in Europe. That gives full federal surveillance over every transaction. You think the IRS is bad now, having to fill out forms once a week and all the loopholes and garbage? And then there's a sales tax over every transaction. They're saying the poor will be exempt. So you've got to swipe a card when you buy, tracking what you did. I mean, can you imagine the nightmare of bureaucracy? How about we get rid of the income tax that we didn't have until 1913? We got the income tax a la the Federal Reserve the same year. And 100% of it, even Ronald Reagan's commission shows, goes to pay for the interest on the debt created by the Federal Reserve. And so, of course, a Federal Reserve spokesman gets up there and makes a few conservative sounds, and talks bad about Obama and says he hadn't lived the black experience. And Herman Cain is more of an authentic American black man than Obama. Uh, but the point is that even though Herman Cain doesn't have a Ivy League mystique to him, he has a very charismatic kind of black good old boy mystique to him, kind of like a Ross Perot, he is no Ross Perot. He is the former head, not some junior member, of one of the most powerful branches of the private Federal Reserve. I mean, he is a made man in the private bankster cartel. And he's up there going, I've got a 999 plan for you. And he says in the debate tonight, I know I'll be attacked on my 999, but I'm going to go after Romney for his uh, socialist health care plan that Obama used. The Federal Reserve endorsed that. They've endorsed the socialist Occupy Wall Street movement. They want to collectivize and get everybody under their control and siphon off most of the money. And so think about it. Only some bamboozling fake conservative could come in and pose as a Ron Paul but actually work for the Federal Reserve and deliver them that new all-controlling tax over all human activity they want. Two new federal taxes, VAT and a sales tax. We had some other articles up there about how devastating the, uh, the VAT or a sales tax would be to this country. Look, we built this nation, like what Ron Paul says. And meanwhile, you've got the other two Republican 
so-called front runners, people like Mitt Romney, promoting carbon taxes that are selectively enforced to shut down non-insider coal power plants that are totally clean. Uh, in England, it's already massively increased their power, but they don't care. This is another tax paid directly to global corporations through government power. And America, if you elect Herman Cain or Barack Obama again, or, or Mitt Romney, uh, or Rick Perry, you get what you deserve. The people perish for lack of knowledge. Ron Paul's got the constitutional record. He predicted all of this. He's anti-Federal Reserve. And if you want to elect a Federal Reserve made Mafia Don, the head of the four-state area based around Kansas City, go ahead, slit your wrist. I know, you like to fail, you like to get conned. I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. We're going to continue to move forward to defeat the globalist. Uh, now I want to get into Chris Harkonnen Christie, the obese Baron Harkonnen floating around, uh, and his, uh, his, his fellow corporate uh, Malthusian uh, you know, guys that want to cut all the benefits but never cut the corporate welfare and the tens of trillions of banker bailout. Uh, Chris Christie uh, has now endorsed uh, Mitt Romney, who was praised by Al Gore for wanting carbon taxes and wrote the Obama plan. And again, conservatives, mainline ones, love it. I mean, they love being conned. They love being gang raped. They love cashless societies. They love fluoride in their water. Just like Obama idiots love being conned by Obama and thought they'd get free cars and free houses from him. Uh, you've got Baron Harkonnen uh, Christie endorsing, uh, I guess, Fade Raban R Romney. A little silly Dune analogy. If you're not aware of it, you haven't read the novels. The movie's pretty stupid, but so what? The point is, there you go. You love it. You got it. Again, they've sent out a multiple shills to keep you away from Ron Paul and uh, oh isn't Chris Christie great he cut welfare not for the rich I'm all for the free market just I'm tired of rich people getting my tax money that's where most of it goes it doesn't go to the poor welfare mom she's just a ticking time bomb for the bankers that if she doesn't get her welfare check you know her family's gonna burn down half the city she works with the bankers and doesn't know it I'd rather be free and not be on the plantation but again fat ass uh, excuse me <laughs> That piece of trash, Christie, and that piece of trash, Romney, they got better plans for America. And I know they want to gang rape you and you want it, so, but just not me, okay? It's a republic. Just because you vote for tyranny doesn't mean I got to go along with it. Okay, okay. Uh, let's move on. Hank Williams got persecuted. Everybody's favorite hillbilly. He got persecuted for talking about Obama being a tyrant and the Republicans being evil. That's the real reason he got in trouble. He said he hates them all and pointed out that 89% of Americans hate Congress, both parties. But he's come out with a very rebellious anti-New World Order, don't tread on me, I'll keep my guns, that's the way it is, and that's what we need. I'm glad he didn't completely capitulate and bend over and apologize a hundred times. He came out and said, go to hell, you can keep the change, I'll keep my liberty. So we salute Hank Williams, Jr. And uh, continuing on along, moving on along here, as they would say, uh, I want to get to the Occupy Wall Street people. Uh, we have now confirmed in multiple videos in Matt Medina in San Antonio and Adam Kakesh in D.C. The Democrats have now taken it over. George Soros has now taken it over. No Ron Paul signs allowed. No filming of their public meetings out in the town square allowed. Even though they don't have the right to tell you no filming, they still come up and henpeck you until you shut up. They're men henpecking you, if you know what I mean. Uh, one guy looks like Pig Nose Freddy or something. Uh, and just all of this going on, just mindless idiots uh, attacking capitalism, free market, when it's the global corporate board that wants to get rid of that. Uh, we have uh, that report. Speaking of people that know what's going on, uh, to explain this video you're about to see, I was at the In the Fed rally that's still going on, by the way. People are occupying it up in Dallas, just so get out there uh, today or tomorrow to support them. A few dozen are out there right now. And the cops were kind of laughing. They, and they suddenly come up with barriers and put us in a cage, about 400 of us. So I came over and I said, you know, I'm leaving now. But I said, you know this Federal Reserve funded Hitler and they put fluoride in your water and cancer viruses and vaccines. And The cops were laughing. And I said, listen here. I'm not laughing. I said, cancer's tripled the last few decades, diabetes, all these things. I said, it's not funny. They were laughing. And I said, when your wife or kids die or you die prematurely from this, remember I warned you. And the, one, and, the, and the one cop went over and talked to the, uh, to the head cop and was very upset later. I didn't catch it on tape going, I can't believe he said that to me. It was very extreme, and I thought he was threatening my kids. No, jackass. Excuse me. No, I was trying to warn you, like, don't play in traffic. I'm your friend, and nothing frustrates me more than you not getting it. But as I'm talking to him, and we've got some iPhone video of it that's not that good, 
it'll, it'll, it'll cut to that. As I'm talking to him, this guy goes, yeah, like my son. I'm going, it's gone from one in, you know, uh, 25,000, 30 years ago to one in 58 has autism. I mean, you go to the movies now with your kids. It's like the whole th three rows are kids that are just like autistic and been seriously hurt by this stuff. And he, he said, yeah, my son got damaged. And he told the story off record before he went to video. It was freaking me out. Not off record, but not on camera about... Yeah, the two-and-a-half-year-old running around talking, giggling, happy. They give him that round of shots. Suddenly, you know, convulsions, you know, not being able to talk. W whatever. It happens to all the kids. I'm tired of it, you murderers. And I just want to warn you, cops. You're, you're under attack just like us, even if you think you're part of the system. And that's the final domino in this matrix to fall. You're under the same attack. And I'm sorry reality's scary. I told you the government was shipping drugs in. I told you the... Government was shipping guns into Mexico years ago, six years ago. It's now mainstream news. I know what I'm talking about. I live in the real world. I'm here offering the red pill. Now, if you want to crawl up the hind end of the New World Order because you think it's warm and safe there, go ahead. All right, I should really make this a family show. We've got a lot of folks watching. It's just the time is short, and I don't have time to screw around anymore. And hearing this little kid and, and, and his dad talk about what happened to him. See, Pol Pot lined up people and shot them if they were educated and intelligent. The globalists just try to damage us all. They soft kill us. Let's, let's go to the clip. All right, we're here at In the Fed, October 7th, 2011, and we've been here about three hours. I was getting ready to go get on the bus. I was getting ready, in the Fed, I was getting ready to get on the bus and drive down to Houston where we are tomorrow and then San Antonio the next day. And I walked over to the police, some of which were smiling, but others which were laughing. And I said, listen, autism was 30 years ago, 1 in 25,000. Now it's 1 in 58. Brain degenerative stuff is off the charts. Cancer's tripled. Diabetes has tripled in a decade. I've got all the government documents where they're killing us. And some of the cops were laughing. And I was warning them about their families because they're not going to listen now. But as more and more people get sick in this soft kill system that the globalists have launched, people are going to wake up. Monsanto our, corn. Our life cycle is 20 years per generation. So remember, when your children die of cancer and are sterile, and this poor child brain damaged by the shots, remember, remember, remember what you're facing. Remember this wasn't a joke. Remember, remember what you're protecting. Remember when you're lowering your kid into the grave, or when your wife died at 35 of cancer. I came here and I watched. They did it. They did it all. You understand that? Hey, how you doing? God bless you, brother. Hey, God bless you. An example is within three generations of guinea pigs and rats, with all the major GMO crops, there's almost complete sterilization and massive mental retardation in all mammal species fed three generations of major GMO crops. This is done by, on purpose. This is the globalists, the White House science artists said they want to put stuff in the food. But the chemical bioweapon they've launched on little boys, I was over telling the cops, warning them, because you know, we're all in this together, and people that feel like they're part of the system don't understand. And it was kind of funny to some of them. Others were, you know, took it serious. And this gentleman said, no, right here, my son. Now, 1 in 25,000, 1 in 58. Cancer, tripled. They're killing us. And I've covered all the documents, all the plans. It's all declassified. But people can't face up what they're doing to us. HIV was created, everything. They learned the Nazis just mowed people down with tanks. Now they put it in your food and your water. The fluoride, all of it. It is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. And so this gentleman came over and volunteered for he and his son, his son's autistic, to talk about what vaccines did. Sir, tell us your name and what happened to you. Here's the mic. My name is Jimmy Beckway, and uh, several years ago, Sean Michael here, my second son, who's 10 years old, he received a vaccine, and a little while later, he started exhibiting symptoms of autism. And according to the MD who's treating him alternatively, it was definitely the vaccines which caused this. And you can do research on the Internet anywhere and find out about it, what all it's doing. Like Alex said, now one in every 58 children is autistic. There has to be something going on, and it is the, it is vaccines. When I first had Ed, Evan diagnosed with autism, there wasn't much of anything. I had to find out about biomedical treatment on the Internet after I typed in autism on Google. And out three years later now, there's three books and many... Mm thousands of children getting better because of biomedical treatment. Jim, one of those books so much uh, focus to this problem. 
And uh, kind of that's why I'm here, is I want to bring mo as much focus as we can to this problem. I will never give either one of my two children a vaccine again as long as I live. Even if it means my death, I will not give them a vaccine. People are most definitely waking up to the fact because um, respectable, mainstream, professional, entirely intelligent people are, are, are now realizing for themselves that this is affecting their families. You, you know, if autism doesn't affect you now, then it certainly will in the future because the numbers are going up so quickly. So people are coming to the realization in the saddest, most tragic possible way, and that is a personal experience of the problem. And um, it's just too big now to, to brush under the carpet. People ask why I'm not scared of you. How could I be? We are going to defeat you murderers, and we know what you're doing. And you are going to be defeated, and humanity is going to rise up, and there's going to be a Nuremberg, and you're all going to pay for what you've done. You think, it, you, think it, you think it's cute what you've done? We see you, and more of us see you every day. And vengeance and justice is coming for you Nazi murderers. You understand that? For all the killing you've done, you're going to pay for it, and we know who you are. Remember that. All right, that's it. God bless you all. Son, come here. Thank you for the courage, sir. Uh, watching that really gets me angry again. And, and, and you notice they ran a hoax last year saying Wakefield had been discredited and had Lancet pull a study. And it turned out there were all these other studies that confirmed it and then just said that it was a hoax. They just, uh, they've run hoaxes saying there's no mercury in the shots. I mean, it's just, well, it doesn't cause Guillain-Barre when it's on the insert. Um, just incredible information there. Uh, it is a nightmare, and we've got to face the true horror of it. Okay, uh, let's go to this final little piece before we go to break and come back with our first interview with the gentleman that pointed out that Goldman Sachs rules the world on BBC and got so much attention. And then Max Kaiser coming up. It's a jam-packed transmission. We're putting a lot of work into it here at PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. If you're watching this and believe in this information and want to get it out to others, please support our operation. We're listener and viewer supported. Become a PrisonPlanet.tv member. Sign up at InfoWarsNews.com today. Again, that's InfoWarsNews.com. This next piece was the guys were in Denver to cover that martial law takeover drill. They went in and got some interviews and shot some footage of the mural uh, there that has so much death and destruction type iconography in it. And then we'll go to break and come back with our first guest. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Is this the first time you've ever seen the mural? No, I'm actually, uh, I live here, so I come through and check it out every now and then. I'm taking pictures. I read about it on, on, online, looked it up. What do you think it means? Uh, I can only tell you what I was, what I read. Um, basically, it seems like uh, there's a soldier cutting through the dove piece, and uh, his sword is an Arabian sword. Um, I'm not sure about the women and the angel type things. Um, and the, uh, the, the towers here, very familiar to a lot of people, kind of look like uh, 911 towers, whatever. So, I, can see that. I don't know, strange thing to have in this airport. What are your thoughts when you see something like this? Um, I think it's very well done, it's impactful. Um, color scheme's great, theme seems a little austere for an airport, but. You don't think there's a nefarious hidden agenda, a hidden meaning behind it or anything like that? Yeah, I don't know, I've heard that theory a lot. Maybe, you know, the underground prisons under Denver or DIA, all that stuff. Could be. I'm a little skeptical. So this is the first time you've ever seen this mural? Yeah, the first time I've ever seen it. Let's take a look. I mean, what are your thoughts when you look at something like that? Do you think it's kind of an odd uh, mural to be put in an airport? Or? Not necessarily. I think it explains a lot. Okay, such as? Such as just, you know, I mean, America and everything else. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and it pretty, pretty much shows what's going on. You know, there's a knight. He's taking care of things. There's people that are suffering, and he looks like he's taking it over and taking care of it. So he's, he's like a protector, you think? I think, I think he's a protector, you know. I mean, you're wearing a gas mask, and you have a sword in your hand. What else are you doing? <laughs> is this the first time you've ever seen the mural? Yes, it is. Uh, I've seen it on the internet before. So, all right, so you've seen it on the internet, and I saw you turn the corner, and you're like, oh my God, here it is. So, all right, so uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, I've, heard, about I've it. heard some theories where there's like an underground facility in this, in this airport. It's just like really dark and kind of scary looking. It is a like little creepy looking, yeah, yeah. Machine gun wielding. And the crying innocence in the background. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Like fleeing? That's, that's yeah. real creepy. Oh, it's just, I mean, this is kind of sad, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
some a kid who died in Auschwitz, 14 years old. Yeah. That, you know, basically their childhood was taken away from them through everything they went through. It looks like, you know, they hate, they hate enemies. They, they hope that one day they'll be able to wake up and laugh again. It's sad that there's people out there that think like that. Some people say it's put here to kind of get distract people from really what really goes on in DIA. Don't you think it's an odd place to put a mural like this in a, an international airport? I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It is. Like, uh, I mean, if you wanted to put, a, if you wanted to send a message to someone, I mean, it's kind of the best place. And so, do you think this is more of an artistic endeavor? You know, with the symbolism and everything. You know, this guy kind of looks like a Nazi, but um, is there any hidden meanings? A dark hidden meaning, or is this more kind of a artistic piece? You know. I think I don't. I'm not someone who looks at things in a dark, hidden type of th way. So to me, I don't look at it like that. You know, the most disturbing piece of this whole thing is just that. That's what gets me the most. What about the rumors that there's a whole underground type of bunker here? Have you heard of those as well? I've heard those. Do you think uh, there's any truth to that? Definitely possible. More possible than what they give you on the news. It looks funny the way that you can see uh, when you're coming in. You can see that there's construction's been over for years here, but there's construction everywhere, all over, going on on the grounds of the airport. Constantly, constantly, and you can see them actually working up because once it's a hill and they'll have a road that goes around it, and you come back a year later and there's two roads because the hills kind of moved up, as if the hills are expanding upwards. You think it's an odd place to have a mural like this in an international airport? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know what its place is here or why it's here. Um, it's definitely not something you expect to see walking through an airport, though. I hear you. So. It's going to be a 10-hour show. I had to come back and say something about that as we go to break. Um, I've been out to the Denver International Airport. I've talked to the experts. I've looked at it. They are building giant underground bases. And close to there, uh, you've got some of the uh, main bases in Colorado that are being set up by the Pentagon for NORTHCOM. Uh, it is the real government of the United States. They've got a shadow Congress, a place for them to meet. They're in Colorado Springs, under the mountains. They admittedly have underground bases there. And I've talked to some of the workers that have been involved in it. It's all compartmentalized, but they've got giant underground connectors and systems there to bring Americans in on aircraft to disappear underground uh, into prisons and execution centers, uh, but also to uh, get the elites uh, underground under biochemical, uh, nuclear, radiological attack. Super creepy. And then you look at the mural, you know, a lot of it is Spanish uh, Civil War, pre-World War II, uh, clearly. Uh, and then that's basically from the communist perspective. And then it's got some other occultic New Age stuff and some Aztec shamanism involved in it. Um, very powerful art. And we're trying to contact, we have contacted the uh, artist to tell us exactly what it means or correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think the artist was chosen not because they're a bad person. I think overall this is anti-fascist information by the globalists that have made Colorado the real capital of the U.S. in their own admissions, the, the capital of the shadow government to just add to the foreboding. Because to the psychopaths, this is beautiful, this is not ugly. Because then you've got Anubis and all these other giant, weird uh, Egyptian gods there and pyramids and as the guy said mountains that start rising up where they're dumping the dirt and building for year after year I mean there's something weird going on there and we'll continue to take your tips at Infowars.com okay we're going to break coming back with the fella that made all that news and they said is he real is he a yes man is it fake he said Goldman Sachs is evil it's got to be fake everybody knows they make the sunshine it's Infowars nightly news stay with us out the governments don't rule the world Goldman Sachs rules the world 
Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. Welcome back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. That was a short clip from the interview that aired a week and a half, two weeks ago uh, with the gentleman we're about to be uh, talking with. And when Alicio Rastani came out and said those things that I've said, Max Kaiser said, so many other economists we've talked to have basically said, uh, the BBC reporter acted like, you know, he had said that the, the Pope was caught barbecuing small children on his front lawn or something. I mean, it was this, this feigned disbelief when it's well known the things he was talking about uh, are pretty much accepted fact by anybody that uh, can uh, add four plus four together. But expanding on that, then we saw Forbes and all these other publications say, was it a hoax? Is it fake? He's not really a traitor. And so it really turned into uh, the system panicking. Alicia Bastani has been a full-time trader for six years, focusing mostly on U.S. stock markets. He writes for the uh, blog LeadingTrader.com, highly visited site, a website dedicated to dismantling no BS information about trading. He currently lives and works in London, England. And we appreciate him joining us today because he caused quite a fracas by saying that the emperor was wearing no clothes. Why do you think they freaked out so bad and tried to imply it was a hoax, but later had to admit that it wasn't a hoax? Hi, Alex. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say thank you very much for having me on your show. It's a great honor. And uh, I'm a big fan of Austin, Texas myself. Uh, love to visit. But um, as, to, um, as to why... I think it happened. Uh, for one thing, I think it was because it was too good to be true, maybe, for someone like some, who, someone who's a trader to come on TV and say those things. Uh, because usually, you know, these financial pundits who come on TV, they, they don't say anything sub substantive. They just say the same old crap all the time, you know. So someone who actually spoke was, someone actually said something which sounded true, seem too good to be true for some of these guys, some of these, uh, you know, uh, media folks. So maybe that was one reason. Uh, as for whether it was a conspiracy to discredit me, it's possible, uh, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Well, my point is, is I've seen other people on other prominent channels. Max Kaiser, for one, coming up later, he had his own BBC show a few years ago and basically said similar things, because it's true. And there wasn't this big gasping and freaking out. I mean, I think a lot of it is because this stuff is so transparent now. It's so obvious that the emperor is wearing no clothes that when you pointed it out in a clear and concise way, it freaked him out. I mean, I've talked to people that are invited to Federal Reserve meetings to be let in, you know, to the inside scoop if they're wealthy. Uh, and, and they say things are going to collapse. Here's how we profit. I know a lot of big stock traders. That is their big joke. So what you said was true. You said, hey, you can make a lot of money off this. And so you did let the cat out of the bag or you let the general public know that they're on the menu for dinner. But uh, let's now talk, you, you know, unfettered, uh, specifically from your years of trading, uh, the, uh, you know, why you picked up this uh, worldview and what some of the other traders around you say. I mean, let us into more of the secrets uh, that seem to upset these people so much. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned secrets because um, I don't think they are secrets, you know. Uh, it, I mean, I know there's a lot of people, you know, general in the general public who don't know about these things, about the fact that traders and even nowadays with technology, even ordinary people can make money when markets go down. But what I was talking about, I mean, you're right, Alex, because in a, in a, in a, in a way, what I was talking about is what Goldman Sachs has been getting away with for years, which is basically um, dumping crap on people and uh then betting against the very same people you know uh so you know taking taking uh, the opposite side of the action uh to what they themselves were selling uh it happened in the dot-com crash the year 2000 it happened in the great depression 1930s it happened in the housing bubble and the housing crash uh so what i was saying to people is look these guys these these bankers these these idiots who got us into this mess in the first place these guys are already making money by betting against you, by betting against everybody, the stock market. So now it's your turn, you know, don't be a chump. 
uh, I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting people should go out, go out there and gamble with their money. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, um, what I was trying to get out there is, uh, there are ways that you too, uh, you know, and whether you're listening from home or anywhere, that you too can get on the same game uh, that these guys have been doing for years. So I don't think it's a big secret, but some people obviously thought, well, uh, this stuff is new. Well, some have likened it to suicide bankers. Uh, Max Kaiser you know, tells that uh, documented story in the 9-11 Commission of a guy who stayed at his desk, even though you know, the, you know, the, the building was on fire, to make trades betting against airlines. And you know, he made $5 million, but he died. It's almost this target uh, psychosis or narcosis where they get so obsessed with the mission that they're wrecking society. It's, it's not free market. It's government has allowed them uh, to do this and allowed certain inside players. Uh, and we saw the Timberwolf emails connected to the big banks saying, look at my dumb idiot uh, customers. Man, they're morons. I'm going to sell them this SH blank T. <laughs> ha ha ha. You have earthquakes in Japan or earthquakes uh, in the U.S. and invariably Goldman Sachs and other brokers put out the Twitter, oh, my wallet fell. I mean, just a total disconnection from humanity. Uh, give me your view on that because, you know, that's really what you were hitting upon was the predatory yeah. nature. See, the thing is, I, I'll be honest with you, Alex, look, when, when I'm looking to short the markets, you know, as, and layman, in layman's terms, you know, bet against the markets or make money downwards. I don't really think of it, I, I mean, I, maybe I guess I should, you know, maybe I should think of it from a human standpoint, but I don't. For me, it's just, you know, a, a job, you know, it, it's in the same way that the carpenter, you know, you know, makes buildings, you know, houses, and in the same way that the plumber fixes pipes, a fireman does his job. For me, betting against the markets and selling short when markets crash, uh, it's just part of the game, you know. I don't really think of it in those kind of terms, uh, you know, uh, whether, whether people are, you know, the, the fact is that companies are going bankrupt and people's jobs and uh, pension is going down with it. I mean, I know it sounds terrible, but that's the truth. I don't sure, think- Sure, you're just being honest about the current system. I mean, that's like with Bonnie and Clyde. They asked Clyde, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money's at, or you've got the parable of the scorpion and the frog, and the scorpion says, we take me across the river. And the frog says, you're going to sting me and kill me. He said, no, I promise I'll be friendly. Take me across and I'll be nice. So the frog says, nice frog. He says, get on my back. And when they go over the other side, the scorpion stings him and the frog's in pain dying. He says, why'd you kill me? He said, I'm a scorpion. And, 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 and so I guess in a way, we're the sheep here to be gang raped. The vampires are here to feed. And then they even call it free market. So the grassroots calls for socialism, which only helps the bankers more because now they can consolidate power and suck it off offshore. And... I mean, it's kind of our bug-eyed, sheepish, mentally retarded lot to just to just sit here and be gang raped. Right. Um, I would say this, Alex. A lot of people do think that selling that people who sell short, people who are betting against the markets, uh, making money when the markets crash, that it's immoral. I personally do not believe that. I don't accept that view. Uh, Short sellers provide a good service to the markets. We can't do without them, basically because for two reasons. They provide liquidity in the markets. There's more activity, more liquidity, more and money. And it also flowing. brings balance from a, from a rational exuberance. You must have missed what I was saying. I, I think you're a good guy. You're being honest. We could short big, evil, corrupt companies we don't like. I, I purely right. get it's just a tool force of nature. I'm talking about Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, the insiders who are exempt from SEC rules, whose former officers sit in the Federal Reserve and SEC, who've gotten tens of trillions of banker bailout money to back up their derivative crap, because you were bringing up people selling garbage. I'm talking about right. listing garbage as AAA. That's criminal. And, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, uh, you were getting off into, you know, on the show that I saw on BBC about Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, making money in downtimes and they rule the world. And they were freaking out about that. So, I mean, uh, that was just them freaking out about the obvious. I was just going further to the point of the rest of the story. You started to allude to how they're selling people toxic assets. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's absolutely true. And I would agree with you 100 uh, percent because... Uh, Goldman Sachs has been behind, as I mentioned, almost every major crash in history. And a good example is the dot-com crash. I myself, actually, Alex, was a victim of that 
crash. Uh, I was one of these donkeys in the year 2000 who bought these dot-com crap. Because again, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just following the same strategy everyone else did, buy and hold stocks and eventually you make money. What I didn't realize is, as I do realize now, is that Goldman Sachs, among with a whole bunch of other people, JP Morgan and everyone else, uh, these guys had been overinflating these, uh, these technology stocks, you know, inflating this bubble uh, through a number of processes, uh, which you probably know about, like uh, one is called laddering. Uh, where basically, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you, you promise your clients um, that, you know, you're going to give them a lower price of the stock. And eventually you say down the line, you will buy it at a higher price. So almost kind of uh, guaranteeing that the price of the stock is going to rise and rise, uh, you know, by, by this kind of manipulation. Uh, so yeah, Goldman Sachs been around, you know, they've been behind every major crash in history and uh, again, uh, dumping these crappy stocks onto unaware investors and then betting against the very same people. Um, sure, they invented have- they invented the pump and dump. And, and if you look in third world countries, first world countries, they'll spend a decade getting their prime minister, their president, their finance minister in in South America, in Asia, in Europe. I mean, it's always the same. This is a criminal crew. And I think them freaking out on you coming out and saying, hey, this is predatory, being honest about it. I mean, it was like saying, oh, my gosh, you, know, you mean fish swim in the sea or, you know, two plus two equals four. I mean, it was the height of ridiculous. And for weeks, a week and a half, is he real? Is he real? And they could have just called you. We went and looked it up. They tried to say you were one of these yes men or something when you were simply right. stating that the sky is blue, that birds have wings. Uh, that, uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, it's just too amazing. Now, let's get more into this. Why specifically are you saying, because I agree with your analysis, but from your own research, why does Goldman Sachs rule the world? And then what are some of the strategies uh, or gambits uh, that uh, people can use, that the establishment's using uh, to profit from the engineered downturn? Because I know if the general public profits from it, that could actually screw up their actuaries and, and, and could actually help in the end uh, if we just don't cookie cutter when they say buy and hold it while we slit your throat. Uh, if people actually learn what you and others have learned, uh, then the magicians can't screw us. Um, yeah, I wish that second point could be true. Uh, I'll come to that point in a second, um, Alex. As to, the, as to the first one, as to why I said it, uh, again, this is something I believe to be true. Uh, it's something, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't something that interests me that much. I don't think of it too much about what Goldman Sachs is up to, but uh, as, as to why I said it, I mean, here's one good example. As you yourself know, Alex, as, as many people may, may know, uh, you know, the, a lot of ex-Goldman Sachs employees work in the government in the United States. Uh, I've already mentioned a few days ago, I was in Ireland and I mentioned uh, on a show that uh, Henry Paulson, this is a guy who was the former CEO of uh, Goldman Sachs. Oh, Goldman Sachs. Yeah, yeah, he gives himself banker was, bailout money and then gives himself his own waivers. You're talking about the revolving door. Please continue. That's right. I mean, this guy was the architect of the bailouts, and this guy then was funneling all this money to his, uh, you know, to his cronies like Robert Rubin and John Taines of Merrill Lynch, and you know, they're basically making other uh, guys in the city rich through bailout money. Um, and, you know, it, the fact is the relationship between the banks and the government is so blurred uh, it, 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 that it's not really clear who is the puppeteer and who is the puppet. But people can make up their own minds about that as to who rules the world. And I, I, I'm well, it's, I it's like an inbred family. I mean, it's a revolving door, as you just said. So it isn't the government or the mega banks that that run it. It's it's like two Siamese twins. I mean, it's 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 like. It's like a breed. That's right. uh, I mean, it, 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 these people do even intermarry. And so, I mean, that's what's happening uh, right here. How do we so stop it? Yeah. Well, sorry. No, go ahead. Go, finish yeah. your point. Going to your second point, going to your second point about how the public can get on the game. That's the problem. You see, the problem is whenever people get on any game, it's too late. You see, that's why it's called the herd effect. The, the herd, uh, I know it's an ugly word to use, but that's the truth. By the time the masses get on the game, it's too late. That's because the, the reason is the masses rely on the wrong kind of information. Yeah, they watch CNBC, of- but that's my point. If you watch Infowars.com, I'm not tooting my horn. You're going to be <laughs> years ahead. No, I'm serious. You're going to be years ahead, and you are not going to be in the herd. I agree by the time the general public figures it out, Gold will be at 5,000. 
or by the That's time right. you know things like that happen. I mean, but I'm not talking about the herd. I'm talking about the inside baseball we're here dis discussing. Yeah. Well, as far as what uh, as far as what the institutions are up to, um, the, the point is actually. I mean, I don't really. I don't really care what those guys. Uh, I, I, that's not my. That's not the way I look at the markets. I mean, uh, I don't do any kind of insider trading or anything like that. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have that kind of information. Uh, what I do is the, the legal way of trading, and it's the next best thing to insider trading. Um, so I, you know, uh, for me, trading is trading off the charts, and. Uh, using as many tools as I have in my access to be able to uh, discern what the insiders are up to, okay? So, uh, you, you know, that, that's, as a trader, you know, uh, if, when you're trying to make an income from this and when you're trying to be able to make money from this, you can't really um, hope that you're gonna get some inside tips. You need to use your own skills. You need to use your knowledge of how the market works and uh, your analysis of the markets uh, to be able to make money. Uh, and I'm putting it in layman's terms, you know, I'm not going to technicals on this, you know, understand. So, uh, I hope that makes some sense. Uh, no, no, that here. makes total sense because any army can put out disinformation about their movements, but if you can visually identify the real movements and not the decoy movements, you can right. then get a general image of what's happening. Well, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, Alex. See, before all this technology uh, came into action, many years ago, 20, 30 years ago, these institutions, the smart money, the funds, they could do things and they could hide their actions. Nowadays, they can't do that very easily. They might be able to a little bit, but then they can't do it because technology is now advanced to the point that whenever these big guys make any decisions, make any, make, when, when, whenever they're making any kind of uh, uh, shifting of money from one thing to another, they leave trails behind, you know, they leave um, footprints behind. And if you know how to follow those footprints, if you follow those trails, you can have a pretty big clue as to what's going on behind the scenes. So- Well, here's um, an example. Let, uh, let, let's talk about in 1815 uh, in Europe, continental Europe, Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon Bonaparte faces Lord Wellington. He's defeated in that pincer attack, that Prussian, British pincer attack, and the Rothschilds, this is on record, got their horsemen to gallop at full speed, exhausting the horses in a Pony Express, got on a fast cutter Corvette, shot across, went in and lied and said, Wellington is defeated, we're going under French rule. Stock markets dropped by close to 99%. Uh, Lord Rothschild started you know, you know, selling it first to make them panic. He bought it all back up and became the head of the British Empire financially. Today, they couldn't really do that. Uh, so instead, they'll put out fake announcements that the announcement says one thing, the fine print says another, but people have learned to get in the fine print quickly. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on. But sometimes they still announce. They announced uh, Russia attacked Georgia, and I wasn't even ready for that three, four years ago. I, I, I went in and I said, they've attacked, and I actually went and searched. And it was like, no, Georgia attacked Russia, or that Russian-held area. So that they can still try these bold hoaxes. Uh, right. But uh, look, look. Finish up your point then. A few tips for people about what you're tracking right now, or or or, or you know ideas you've had, uh, you know what you're writing about uh, at uh, the site that you blog for, and then uh, also any um, anything you can tell us about media contacting you. I mean, did they call and say, "Are you real?" instead of just saying, "Oh my gosh, it must be a hoax," because this guy said the sky's blue. Yeah, um, the first few calls I got. Um, I guess I shouldn't mention who called me, but. A very very prestigious newspaper a magazine called me uh, and they asked me aren't you I mean I, I had calls from all kinds of magazines you know newspapers around the world uh, and one called me up saying hey uh, are, aren't you the guy from the yes man and I said what are you talking about what Jim Carrey what are you talking about so and I said uh, no no the yes man and the guy that guy on the uh, on Dow Chemical and I said I have no idea what you're talking about and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to be honest. When all this was kicking off, and all these newspapers were coming to contact me, I I I, I couldn't figure out why because I thought there was nothing controversial about what I said. Um, but going back to your point about tips or anything like that, um, I would say anybody out there who's thinking about buying stocks got to be very careful. 
because one of the major mistakes anybody can make in a, in a market that's going down, when stocks are getting cheaper, uh, if you go and buy those stocks just because they're cheap, the biggest mistake is you're trying to catch a falling knife because stocks can go all the way to zero. Yeah, just like what happened back in 2008 when many stocks like Lehman Brothers and some over here in the UK collapsed and went to zero. So you've got to be very careful. Don't stand in front of a freight train. Okay, so you've you got to make sure the stock is starting to go back up a little bit before you actually buy it. Okay, same with commodities. Uh, you, want it to find say, its, you want it to find its bottom and then crest back up a bit just to be safe as a rule? Exactly. You've got, to be, you've got to be very careful of the risks. Well, what about this? Uh, I mean, uh, what about knowing general devaluations in currency globally uh, across yeah. the board? You're going to have a commodity crest across the board, short-term, mid-term, long-term. They can artificially create some dips, raising margin calls and things, in the case of gold and silver. But if you look at the 12-year graph on silver and gold or other commodities, it's really going straight up. So what about a general... Uh, investment uh, in mid-term and long-term type commodities. Obviously, trying to play things short-term uh, would take a lot of time, and energy, and expertise. But what about just a general mid-term, long-term uh, commodities yeah. bet that they're going to go up? Right. Um, well, the first thing I would say is um, whatever investment decision, medium to long-term, you got to do, always take care of the risks. Uh, always look at how much you can afford to lose. Don't ever gamble. Okay, but in terms of that, uh, gold and silver, I think they're still pretty good commodities long term. They have good prospects. The only thing about gold and silver is at the moment, they're looking pretty weak. Um, they've come down quite a bit. Uh, gold is now about $1,600 an ounce. Silver, about, about 30, 26 uh, uh, region last time I checked. Um, you got to be careful. Uh, again, those commodities need to need to gain some strength they need to show some strength uh start going back up again uh before you before you decide to buy them but if they do uh, then they can be very good long-term assets uh to hold you know for example gold for example could go back to to two thousand dollars eventually if it passes if it passes by two thousand it could go to four thousand dollars so yeah uh I mean, the Chinese yeah, but see, generally, I'm looking at a 12-year graph. I was to put one on screen. I mean, yeah. if you look at a 12-year graph, it, it's got... If I give me a document cam shot, folks, I'll show you a 12-year graph. And maybe later after you leave, I can pull it up and show it to people. But, but anybody can just Google a 12-year graph. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's, you know, 1998. And then let's uh, say so 13-year graph. And let's say this is, uh, you know, 2011. And generally... I mean, this is what it's doing. I mean, so I've seen all these dips. I've, I've seen the same things repeated. Yeah. But because overall currencies, because currencies overall are going down, it's a mirror, basically. So global yeah. currencies in a concerted G20 effort are being devalued as part of the inflation tax. So for me, in just basic world history, this is going to go up. Yeah. This, I mean, Alex, this is going to go right. down. Alex, you're right. There is a phrase that says the trend is your friend. Uh, yeah, that the main trend on gold has been up. Absolutely. But you got to also be careful because the trend... You can't just blindly only, trust something. It could change. Yeah, because the trend is your friend only until the end. When that trend changes, and it may, you never know, because it may change, um, you know, you got to be careful. Because, but that would take uh, a major monetary shift towards stronger currencies. Like, exactly, yeah. let's say gold hits $3,000 in the next few years. And then they come out with a new global currency. It may fail or it may succeed, but I'm going to look for in that new domination then to play a game to drive down commodities. Uh, so, so I see that. But just in the general direction we're going right now, I don't see that. Yeah. I think the interesting thing right now is that dollar, the dollar for once is now looking strong. Uh, as in, um, that could be because it's been going down for a long time that it needed a correction. But... Uh, well, that's because it's going to be right. king of the pile of skulls. You've got this global meltdown happening. So, yeah, they're running right. to who has the most exactly. nuclear weapons. Exactly. I mean, pretty much all the currencies right now suck. I mean, the, the euro, the pound, uh, even, even the Swiss franc. I mean, all these currencies right now, they're, they're not doing very well. But that's why the dollar right now is gaining strength. So, as you said yourself, you know, the, there's a flight to safety uh, or, uh, you know, and... Um, I think what's going to be interesting right now is going to, what's going to happen to the yen, the Japanese yen. That's something I'm looking at right now. Uh, Japanese yen has been in a consolidation now for some time, and it's looking to break out now. Um, uh, as to which direction it's going to break out, well, we're going to wait and see. But 
that's going to be my main focus to look at. Alessio Rostani of the website that you can uh, visit to find out more, uh, leadingtrader.com, it's also uh, on screen, uh, joins us. It, it, it's been really interesting talking to you. You know, you never know that phenomenon of what's going to become an extremely viral story for a couple of days. You're one of the biggest financial stories uh, in the world. And I really can find no fault from my own uh, meager understanding uh, of, uh, of the things that you've uh, said here today. Uh, in the last uh, minute or two, I'd like to give you, what are some other topics that I didn't raise, some things that you think are important that you'd like to, like to talk about? I mean, what do you think of Occupy Wall Street? What do you uh, think of their yeah. call for an attack on capitalism? This isn't capitalism, in my view, that did this. It's, right. it's, uh, it's, it's corrupt monopoly people that control government that, that are playing right. by a different set of rules. Give us your view on that and then anything, uh, anything else you'd like to comment on. I understand that people out there are really frustrated. I think that's what's going on. I mean, I'm not... I'm not going to really, uh, obviously the people out there are just frustrated. That's what's going on. I mean, I've been getting emails from people. I, I think what's really come out of this for me is people have really, um, I, I think I've struck a chord with a lot of people out there because the, the, the responses I'm getting is people are saying, listen, I'm really worried. And what you said on TV, um, you know, you spoke, I spoke the truth and you know, people are really worried and they should be because these banks and governments who we put our trust in, and why should we trust them anyway? They're the guys who created this crisis, they produced this crisis, and we're not expecting them to solve it. So yeah, people have a right to be frustrated and worried. Um, uh, and uh, I, for one, my goal is to help people as many ways as I can. I'm not against capitalism, I should say. I'm not against capitalism. Uh, I actually think we, should ha we could have we could have a society with free markets, but hopefully without any corruption. That may sound naive to some people, because some people say, well, there's no such thing as co uh, capitalism without corruption. But I think, you know, we should try to be better people. Um, well, we know communism that, doesn't, is a total nightmare. Look at North Korea. Look at every other example of communism. I mean, that, for me, this isn't, there's been a con job that the free market did this. No, this is six big global mega banks that buy off governments, put their people in place, you said earlier, revolving door takeover, and then they're blaming free market capitalism because they want more government control over their competition. I mean, it's a no-brainer what they're doing. They're praising Occupy Wall Street. They want to raise taxes on the middle class and pay it to themselves and banker bailout money. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, my, my message is very clear, I mean, which was people People out there, I mean, I'm talking about the small guy out there, uh, they should realize that putting their trusts in so-called governments and banks to rescue them is highly misguided. People should take control of their lives. First thing that people should do is get some kind of education on how to take control of their own investments. Uh, any kind of education is better than nothing. There's many books out there, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put some stuff on my website. Uh, people should learn for themselves uh, how best to invest their money, not rely on the so-called advice of experts who got us into this mess in the first place. It was the experts who produced this crisis in the first place. So we should really, we should really think about nourishing our minds, investing in ourselves, not investing in the markets. That's right. That was really well said. Not, not investing in this false reality, but investing in real local communities and in our own families because the, the, the whole Wall Street uh, digital economy is waging war against the real economy and people going to mega banks and government wanting them to protect them. That's like a gazelle going to a lion in the African savanna and saying, please protect me. Stop being a gazelle. Start being the strong, powerful creatures you are. Uh, we are prey animals with a group of psychopaths and sociopaths mixed in with a lot of other control freaks who are attacking us, and, and, and we've been trained to be passive, to be dumbed down, to be into mindless issues, so we're little, basically, D-leg gazelles, and the lions can just come over and eat us at their leisure because we're, we're designed culturally to be gazelles with no eyes, no ears, no, no legs, uh, and, and, and you know the lions weigh about 5,000 pounds and can barely move, they're so degenerate. And I'm just an old Texas redneck who can see what's going on, saying I want freedom. And I'm telling, I mean, I'm I'm a gazelle, but I can run here, you know. And and, and I think that's what comes down uh, to it today. Uh, what are you writing about tomorrow uh, there at your news blog? 
Uh, yeah, basically what I want to do, um, I'm going to, I'm going to publish a few books. I'm sorry, I'm uh, <laughs> not public books. I'm going to put out there uh, a few books people can read about uh, how, how they can educate themselves more about the markets. That's one thing I'm going to do. Um, then I'm going to also write a post about um, some strategies people can use, some very simple strategies people can use uh, to be able to profit from a downturn in the markets. Uh, again, this is not gambling. I, I, one thing I would one thing I would never recommend to people is gamble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah just generally buying stocks is random ga gambling. It's like picking colors on a uh, craps exactly. table. Uh, uh, I want to thank you for joining us, Alicia Rastani. The website is leadingtrader.com. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Good show. Thank you, sir. Amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are f going to break here. And then we're going to uh, come back with the one, the only Max Kaiser, an extended interview. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. The American dream. There's a reason they call it a dream. <laughs> Who's there? Cock a doodle doo, pal. No, 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 no! I don't have any more money! My job sucks right now, please! I'll have more money next month! You can't take my house! Is that your signature? It is a private bank owned by private stockholders. A, a, a private bank? Do not let the name Federal fool you. If I got this money from the bank, and the bank got it from the Federal Reserve dump tracks, where does the Federal Reserve get their money? They take our property away, just like Thomas Jefferson said they would. Those sons of bitches! It's the greatest theft in human history. We are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News on this October 11th, 2011 edition. And I wanted to end this transmission off with the one, the only Max Kaiser. Now, we've talked about a lot of issues with Max in the past the gulag economy, um, the fact that banks were going to start charging you to keep money, and in this cashless society, that they would basically force people uh, onto a digital plantation uh, where you're uh, actually charged for the right to engage in commerce, kind of a global private tax to the bankers. It's all happening. The Euro dictatorship trying to swallow what's left of their sovereignty. It's self-run by private banks, admitting it's undemocratic. Uh, John Major coming out, who was the architect of the Major Treaty, getting England into the Euro, saying it's a terrible thing. We're going to talk about Occupy Wall Street, uh, all these new bank fees. Uh, it is all coming up. Democrats throwing Obama under the bus. And uh, Max is also doing big things uh, over in Europe with the first of its kind economic conference. It's all coming up in this in-depth interview with Max Kaiser. Max, great to have you here with us. Always a pleasure to be with you, Alex Jones. A few weeks ago, a trader came out, a stock trader on BBC, and it made huge news. And, and he was an independent trader, and uh, he said that Goldman Sachs rules the world, and there's a global occupation of bankers. It basically sounded like a replay of Max Kaiser or Alex Jones, and everybody freaked out, and they, uh, dozens of publications, Washington Post, uh, I mean, you name it, BBC, you, you had to come out and say, yes, this is really a real person, this was a real interview. I, I mean, now stating the obvious, uh, they have to ask, you know, is the guy a real traitor? Why did that get everybody so freaked out, but then when you talk about it on big international television or even on BBC with your own show, uh, it doesn't get as much attention. Well, the big interesting part of the Rastani interview that you're referring to, what made it really interesting and newsworthy was the reaction of the BBC presenters who have been cuckled by the banking industry and lied to for years and years that 
They are doing the right thing and the good thing. And so they were like a spouse who suddenly finds out that their uh, wife or husband is cheating on them. You know, these BBC presenters were told in public that the banks are actually trying to screw them and that they're all crooked. And so they had this reaction, this overreaction, this melodramatic reaction on TV. Oh, ridiculous. What... Who could say that? <laughs> oh, who ever heard of that? He says fish swim in the sea. Ooh, 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 ooh. So that's what made it a classic TV moment. And uh, I think that's just part of the overall global insurrection against banking occupation, as I call it. it it's peeking its way into the, the mainstream media. It's poking through the wall and these... It's shafts, seeping into the matrix. Yep, the shafts of light of what's really going on are now beaming into the very controlled media situation. So this is a, a part of that, and it's, it's growing. I, I'm just reading a tweet uh, right now from Lucy uh, Kavanaugh, who's with Russia today, and she is saying that there's a crowd outside of Jamie Dimon's house on the Upper East Side of New York City chanting USA, USA. So as you know, Alex, we've been talking about the fact that the real uh, people behind the banking terrorist network are principally Lloyd Blankfein and Jamie Dimon. We've been telling people that they need to focus their attention on these two characters. Uh, now, uh, Jamie Dimon is suddenly being called out for the financial terrorist that he is. The, uh, the facade has, has been torn away. And people now understand that if you really are for USA, USA, that you would want this terrorist at Guantanamo Bay or waterboarded or something like that because he is destroying your economy more than anyone else in the world today. So finally, people understand who the villain is in this story. Uh, and this is growing. And your show has, of course, been a big part of that. And I think your call to go after the Fed uh, is also very important because Jamie Dimon is on the board of directors of the, of the New York Fed, as well as being the CEO of J.P. Morgan. And the Fed is really the sub level, uh, which is the, the level that needs to be attacked. And I know you were down in Texas and I saw the video down there in Texas. And um, it makes you know, perfect sense. And I hope people like Naomi Klein, who is now a, a resurfacing again, you know, she was a big name during the anti-globalization movement of the late 90s. And she's kind of taking ownership of the Occupy Wall Street demonstrations and protests. I hope that she understands and begins to uh, talk about the Federal Reserve Bank and what they do and their role in this occupation in our own country by these foreign-owned terrorists, the bankers. Well, well, Max, let me raise that uh, uh, to you specifically because two or three weeks ago, I reached out to Occupy Wall Street. I sent reporters all over the country. They really were grassroots. Now in San Antonio, in Dallas, in New York, in D.C., the people that have gotten control of it are Democratic Party operatives in, in many cases. And they say, no Ron Paul signs, no protest the Fed. The Fed is federal. And then they say to us, how dare you not go after Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, uh, Citigroup, Wells Fargo. And I'm like, those are the big mega banks that own the shares of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is how they get their government power. It's how they get their trillions in bailouts. So I'm saying take out their power, take out their fortress, then we can get the little buggers inside uh and just like the mainline tea party got co-opted by republicans now they don't want to go after the fed when it all started with ron paul four years ago now they want to be led by herman cain the former head of the fed in kansas city and it's the same thing with the democrats now uh and 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 and, and the fed coming out and endorsing occupy wall street in a hope of blaming mainline main street and 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 the tens of thousands of legitimate companies on wall street Instead, now it's this class warfare thing, exactly what mainline Democrats want. And it makes me very, very sad because I wanted to embrace Occupy Wall Street. And I know it's a diverse group, but the people that the mainstream media gives attention uh, are people like Michael Moore, you know, saying, let's get rid of capitalism. That's the problem. No, the problem is monopoly capitalist uh, that you talk so much about, uh, these, these monopoly men. So what's your message to them? Am I right in what I'm saying or am I wrong? Should I embrace Karl Marx? right now on air. <laughs> well, uh, as you can imagine, I'm in pretty close contact with the organizers of Occupy Wall Street, principally David DeGraw, who's one of the two or three top people who were who brought the whole thing to life. 
And I, you know, he and I have been talking about this lack of a specific demands uh, for the groups. And my issue, and the risk that I put forward, is that it, as the movement gets bigger and bigger and bigger without a specific goal, it's ripe to be co-opted. And I saw evidence of this just a few days ago when uh, Unilever, which owns Ben and Jerry's ice cream, came out in favor of Occupy Wall Street. So that's a very bad development when, corporate, when a foreign corporation, in this case a Dutch company, Unilever, and they have their fake, uh, organically driven Ben & Jerry's ice cream front come out and start to co-opt this movement for corporate sales purposes, you, you know you're on a slippery slope down to irrelevance. And this is the, the problem is not having a specific goal. If, the, if Occupy Wall Street said our specific goal is to demand that Jamie Dimon steps down as CEO of J.P. Morgan and from the federal, New York Federal Reserve Bank uh, chair position. And or demand a return of Glass-Steagall, or that the trillions of stolen bailout be clawed back, uh, or... Right, but I mean, those, those uh, demands require a, a bit more process and time, whereas a regime change, like uh, Hosni Mubarak in Egypt, I mean, once he got the message, he had to step down. So Jamie Dimon. Yeah, so we put out a, a, a simpler demand to show the power of the movement that makes sense. Hey, step down, Jamie Dimon, and by the way, we want criminal investigations. Right. Now, people will say, well, you know, if you take one Jamie Dimon away, a 10 more like him will take his place. That's true. But you did demonstrate that the power of the group to affect the regime change. And if they put up somebody else who's like Jamie Dimon, he's a financial terrorist, then we're going to he's going to have to step down, too. So the, the regime change is a very specific goal. If you do this, then Unilever and Ben and Jerry's would not want to attach themselves to your movement because suddenly it's got a specific goal and they themselves rely on Jamie Dimon for financing and J.P. Morgan for financing. So by law, uh, their fiduciary responsibility would preclude them from being anywhere near the Occupy Wall Street demands. So this is why having a specific goal is uh, paramount to a galvanizing uh, a, an action that me that will allow this movement to have some success. Otherwise, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it's co-opted by corporate America, and you'll start to see commercials on TV with Ben and Jerry down at Occupy Wall Street eating some new flavor of ice cream, like you know Occupy Occu Cream Pie or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, and and it'll become just another part of that American uh, fudge that just kind of permeates everything that we do where everything's great don't worry disney is here to rescue you and it just goes down the drain well sure now now max i want to shift into some other areas it, it just for me i tried to reach out to these groups and the so-called leaders of it they claim there's no leaders but you know they're i mean there really are democratic party operatives move on they're all involved and it's it's just the left wing of the same military industrial banking complex I mean, look at Obama, the wars, the torture, the, uh, the extrajudicial killings, and now quoting Bush statements by his evil lawyers, you know, as, as the excuse for him to act as an imperial legate. That's my next question. What do you make, because, I mean, I predicted the Obama deception and in fall of the republic that you're in two and a half years ago, that Obama would be politically destroyed because they build him up, then he takes the blame for the agenda, a new puppet comes in. And we know that when things get into these crisis modes, the establishment, the oligarchs, the financial ruling class that are anti-free market, they like to put in puppets, build them up, and then destroy them so they take the blame and not the, the corrupt uh, plutocrats or uh, the uh, you know, autocratic uh, banksters, whatever you want to call them. And now we see Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, hundreds of, 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 of major publications on the so-called left calling for him to step down uh, in the next election and all of this. What does that signify uh, to you that's uh, happening uh, with Obama? What does that signify for this whole agenda? Because then waiting in the wings is a collection of, of other manufactured plastic Ken dolls, Herman Cain, Mitt Romney, Rick Perry. Well, the, unfortunately, it d ruins the whole idea of one person, one vote, and it hides the fact that it's one dollar, one vote. You know, you have this plutocracy in the United States now, this aristocracy, a return to monarchy and a kleptocracy. And they want people to think that the presidency is like 
just dancing with the stars or uh, some other kind of contest show talent show that we want whoever's going to be up there that has the most quote unquote talent and so this makes the american population similar as i see it to what we saw happen in ancient rome uh, the politicians don't try to satisfy the people or the mob with democratic initiatives they try to appease the people with what they call bread and circuses but what in our experience in america it's ultra violence and uh, entertainment and uh, and I think now the, the president's being torn apart i was about to say that as you said it incredible uh, were you about to say the presidents now are in the gladiatorial ring though now 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 we see them politically torn apart so we get some petty yeah we dealt with that obama Right. So you have, uh, well, I was thinking of the extraditional uh, execution of American citizen in Yemen recently. That's like a gladiatorial, um, uh, you know, event where Americans get to cheer uh, the assassination of one of their own. Uh, to this or uh, Obama essentially goes in front of the, the you mean, your, your point is a good one. He, he becomes like they throw him to the, the lions of the banking cartel and then they destroy him. So America, it's like the modern version of the running man. No passes are required at all times. Display passes properly. All interzone workers with day passes are reminded that curfews begin at midnight. Anyone without a valid zone card after midnight will be permanently Cadre kids, don't forget, October is bonus recruitment month. Earn a double bonus for reporting a family member. ICS, your entertainment and information network, reminds you, seeing is believing. What's the number one television show in the whole wide world? Yes! Yes, it's called Running Man. Oh, I can square block the thing. You guys want to buy a hot stereo? Your child, happy, loving, caring. Can you believe this shit? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't listen to it. I worry about the kids. The network shuts down the schools. The kids are either in hiding or getting basic training. Brainwashed by the TV. We can jam the network once we find the uplink to the satellite. Then we'll broadcast the truth. Truth? Hasn't been very popular lately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but historically, you know, it's against the backdrop of a collapsing empire, as we saw in Rome. And the American empire is collapsing. And so they resort to this appeasement of the mob with bread and circuses or violence and amusement. So the violence is getting more gladiatorial and, and, and uh, harsh. And the amusement, you know, the pornography uh, and the gambling and is getting more in your face. So they want okay, to I got to stop you there. You were the first person five, six years ago, even before I got you on the air, talking about a gulag economy and that you'd be paid to play video games and uh, you, 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 all these new fake currencies they'd have. And separately in my research, I knew that once they got us into a cashless society, it wouldn't be about convenience. Just like Google isn't about you learning something, it's about the system knowing what you're into, where you're going, what you're doing. You're allowed to have that service for free because they're building an algorithm on you. Well, it's the same thing uh, with uh, Facebook spying on you, all of this. Uh, I've been talking a lot, and, and this integrates with your research, about how once they get rid of the real economy, and once they bring in the cashless society, Max, that, that the money you'll have to pay to have your money in the bank and you'll have to pay to use your credit card or your debit card and now we see that happening in switzerland now they're starting that in the u.s dozens of new bank fees bank of america just took the plunge first five dollars to use your credit card or your debit card but then you're forced in this modern system into the cashless system a lot of businesses make you take as payment automatic transfers and so we now see what a cage this is this cashless society where they can devalue it and you can't get out from under it uh, where uh, I mean, there's so many ramifications and we're really seeing as they lay off Bank of America alone it's over 50,000 now just the last 30,000 a few weeks ago 20,000 before that this year others are doing it they're just getting rid of retail banking because they've got the tens of trillions of bailout money why should they even have cu customers anymore because they just run the government and steal all our money uh, Max Kaiser
Well, yeah, it's indentured servitude. It's a new cyber equivalent of it. People will find themselves increasingly more into virtual debt, uh, where they're on websites and gaming websites, where uh, they're going to swap the last few dollars that they have for virtual currency, but the interest rate will be real. And in order to pay back the virtual interest rate, they'll have to continue to play the game or click on the ads or participate in some kind of um, online activity which has only one political view possible. Uh, they could create a game where um, you plug into the game and it's all about killing Iranians. But you have to play because you need to get pay back your virtual debt. Well, uh, by the way, at the other end of the game are real Iranians and they're really getting killed. But we won't, you know, bother you with the details. I saw you saw, uh, something interesting also, Alex, which is that uh, on the casino gulag model, uh, you Google this uh, for the specifics. But a town in, in America just recently announced that they were getting rid of all their paid firemen and they're going to replace them with prisoners as part of a prisoner release program, and they're gonna pay them prison wages. And these will be the new firemen in that town. So this is another trend, which we'll see more and more of. All the people that are getting fired, t teachers, policemen, the, the social, the uh, government workers that are being vilified and destroyed, they'll be replaced, because you need garbage men, you need teachers, you need policemen, but they'll be replaced from the prison population and making China-like wages, and they'll be plugged So this is the, the new slavery. You know, you called me six months ago, and I, I came on one of your myriad of uh, international TV shows, and I didn't even know this until you called me. You said, I want you on about 10 plus percent of Texans having arrest warrants out. And I didn't want to act stupid, so I went, okay, Max, sure. I, so I went and Googled it, and there was the mainstream news, and our media was proud of it. And the police were proud of it. We have the greatest prison population in the world. 10% since I checked, it's like 12% now. But, but pretty soon, that'll be your fireman. That'll be your trash pickup. That's already going on in Texas because you'll end up having 30% of people who are basically in the prisons and the rest of us minding them. And so when you call up to get a pizza delivered, it'll be a guy with an ankle bracelet paying off his debt in a government car or some corporate car. I mean, this is a hellish thing that they are uh, building here. Well, look at down in Texas um, and also in Georgia now, uh, in close by state, with the execution of Troy Davis, turning that into a public spectacle to appease the mob, to give them violence and amusement, to appease them. In other words, so the political process is not about voting for stuff that people want. It's about politicians trying to stop the mob from rising up and killing them. Well, yeah, it's Schwarzenegger with a broom, a prop, Perry with a giant hatchet, I'm going to cut, 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 when he more than doubled the Texas government in 10 years. I mean, it, it is all about BS. I mean, you could literally use the bathroom in a box, put it in a pretty bow, and the average yuppie would open it up, and you'd say, here's some chocolate. They'd open it up, it would stink, but they would say, but the package says it's candy. They'd get a fork and start eating it. I mean, people have got to wake up. You know, I'm seeing two things happen, Max. Either people are getting more into a trance or they're getting more and more awake. And these two are really starting to clash. And I see the system trying to bring in more and more tyranny on the backs of this. I'm sure you've seen the article. It's at prisonplanet.com. Also, uh, British papers are reporting it. Uh, the VeriSign, the global domain register, that the government's given the power to do this, uh, they're saying no judge, no jury, no nothing. Anytime a private group, UN group, uh, you, a government group wants your website taken, no appeal, no nothing, it's just taken extrajudicially, and they're admitting this is the new global kill switch. So I see them also just more and more disappearing information. Yeah, well, it's, it's just managing that vo volume of traffic because... Yeah. People are on sites and they're clicking around social networking sites like Twitter and, and um, LinkedIn and Facebook, which now have market valuations of 50, 100, 200 billion dollars. And they're owned in large part by Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. You know, JP Morgan has a big position in Twitter. And so they need to steer that volume of traffic in ways that are consistent with their agenda which is to impoverish as many people as possible. J.P. Morgan, of course, is the bank behind the 
a swipe card that is America's food stamp program, what they call it, the EBT, I think it's called, electronic benefit transfer. That is a JP Morgan product. So they got you at the poor end of the scale. And if you have your wealth managed with them, as we know with the Bank of New York scandal, uh, stealing money out of every single transaction, they control 25 trillion in assets. They took three tenths of 1% of every transaction now going back decades. They're hooked in with Morgan and the whole Wall Street crowd, just siphoning siphoning money off, high frequency trading, just siphoning money every single and day. And that's why they're forcing all of us into a government mandated cashless society, because now they're not just going to siphon little bits here and they're going to rape us seven ways to Sunday. And they think they're going to get away with it as long as they shovel UFC and football and, and public executions at us. Every, every movement, every transaction, every interaction, you know, and I think another prediction I made on your show a while ago, which I still think will come true, is that the copyright industry is so pernicious and their ability to read emails now is so pervasive that pretty soon at the end of the month, you'll get a bill from Microsoft or whomever that'll say, you used this copyrighted word 10 times in your emails last month, you owe us 50 cents. Oh yeah, no, actually they've had companies suing now uh, over uh, message boards and things where people even post a paragraph or right, a headline. So, and, and Facebook is trying to trademark the word face. Twitter is trademarking the, uh, the word tweet. Uh, and now as you use these words, there's a record of it electronically, and you'll be charged for the use of that word. But since you're already broke and you don't have any money to pay for your right to use those words, guess what? They'll loan you the money. And well, that was my next money. point. They now, as you know, have the Department of Education outside of jurisdiction without police force. There is no law. You can go to jail for the debt. SWAT teaming and kicking down doors illegally in California, trying to intimidate people saying, pay your student loans. Uh, you've got Bank of America caught taking houses they never even had a deed to that were paid for. I mean, we've just got to wake up and realize what a group of lawless criminals these are. Now, I want to plug uh, some of the interesting things you've got coming up. Clickonomics. Uh, Ireland's first economics festival and other things. But I want to close with this big economic uh, uh, d development uh, that's come out. John Major, as you know, the former prime minister of England, who actually helped ran, ram through the Maastricht Treaty that brought England without a vote into the euro. And you now you have that unelected bureaucracy in over 70% of uh, British laws and European laws. Now the private interests are saying, Give us tens of trillions or we'll just implode the economy. They're not even saying it's to help the poor anymore. They just dispense with that, the super euro, super state forming. Uh, they're bemoaning on Bloomberg and CNBC that Germany's too democratic and the Germans don't want to fit the bill for it. Major comes out and shifts and says, I was wrong. I've got his quotes here. You know, this thing's corrupt. It's taken our sovereignty. It's destroyed the city of London. It's all moving to Europe. Uh, and we've got to basically get out of the EU. What do you make of this? Uh, I mean, these guys, big insiders don't even like what they've set in motion. I'm seeing a lot of panicking and a lot of infighting in the ruling class you don't normally see. Max, what do you make of this? Well, it's deflation. Uh, the, the banking balance sheets are disintegrating and the UK is dealing with it with austerity. And this austerity after two years is causing rioting, London riots, where thousands are out in the streets. They, uh, the uh, living standards are collapsing. So they're panicking. Uh, same thing all across continental Europe. And Germany is suggesting that maybe it would just opt out of the euro completely. So those old ancient animosities in Europe between the UK, Germany, France, all over Europe are resurfacing as the euro falls apart due to the banking system collapse that was a foregone collusion, um, conclusion because it was entirely built on a faulty assumptions to begin with thanks to the false uh, accounting fraud that was perpetrated by groups like Goldman Sachs who famously hid billions in Greek debt. To so as this goes cattywampus, as it goes foobar, the banksters are in a pickle of their own making. What do you make of Major coming out and saying England needs to get out? I mean, if England leaves, won't that really trigger the implosion of Europe? And, and, and then the banksters won't get this new super state on top of it. What then happens? Where does the contagion oh. move? <laughs> oh, it, it is disintegrating, but they will get their, uh, their, their pan-European bond market their federalization of the Eurozone, because they're going to play the panic card. 
and people are losing their jobs and they're panic stricken and, and during, you know, using the disaster capitalism model, they'll usher in this new layer of bureaucracy, the new taxes, a new Euro central bank facility. They already talked about Davos last year or the year before. It was big news because they openly suggested that what the world needs is a fresh $100 trillion credit line. And that's ultimately what the U.S. and Europe are going to put together. A brand new $100 trillion And the line. Republicans have Herman Cain uh, uh, saying we'll have a new sales tax paid directly to the Federal Reserve. And conservatives are like, yeah, gang rape me. I mean, well, these he, people are a, pathetic. He's, he, he's a former Kansas City central banker. But why are, why are mainline conservatives so into getting gang raped? I mean, why do they love getting conned? Just like the central bankers that robbed everybody are demanding trillions uh, in, in, in new taxes in Europe through VAT and sales tax. I mean, how can conservatives go, yeah, let's, let's pay our fair share to Wall Street. I mean, they worship it so much, the corporate fascist. It's just insane. I mean, okay, look, Alex, Alex, let me tell you my story, which I told before and explains the mentality. When the first tower in the World Trade Towers went down, there was a broker in the second tower. He had a choice. He could escape or he could stay and trade airline put options to try to make money. Because he's a suicide banker, he stayed, he died, but he left $5 million in unclaimed money in that Alex Brown Deutsche Bank account. As, that's, that's right there in the 9-11 official government report. I call him broker zero. He's a suicide broker. And it's the same mentality amongst the entire banker banking class. They're suicidal jihadi bankers who kill themselves and everyone around them because they want to make a profit, which to them is their, their Allah, their God, uh, their belief in the market fundamentalism, as it's called. And that's what they do. They do it because they, they're actually suicidal. They're actually- Yeah, that's profound. That's profound. So they can totally take over. They're going to wreck everything, including their own futures. They're, they're suicidal, pathological. Uh, they, and that's why this movement, Occupy Wall Street, and global insurrection against banker occupation it needs to kick up kick it up and get in gear because you've got psychopaths that are hell-bent on killing themselves and everyone around them including jamie diamond is number the worst suicidal banker out there well max kaiser uh, amazing i appreciate you spending so much time with us maxkaiser.com of course our websites are prisonplanet.tv and infowars.com people can find out about all your great media events the things you're doing at maxkaiser.com briefly Tell us about the Economic Congress uh, event you've got coming up uh, there in Ireland. Yeah, two, two things, Alex. Uh, one is the Kilkenomics Festival in Kilkenny, Ireland, November 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. It's a, it's a festival by David McWilliams. It brings together economists like Jeffrey Sachs with comedians from Ireland who interact and try to make sense of everything. And the second thing I'm doing is I'm restaging the famous bed-in with John and Yoko Ono, except it's going to be Max and Stacy. We're going to be going to the same hotel room in Amsterdam, the Hilton Amsterdam Hotel, room 902, and we're going to restage the bed in. And our message is that all we are saying is let the banks fail. Uh, and if you want to donate five bucks to this effort, and I want one of your reporters to go to Amsterdam and to help pay for that, if somebody wants to donate five bucks, Go to piratemyfilm.com or go to maxkaiser.com and you'll see how to do that. Well, so I've, seen, I've seen Sean, I think I saw a photo online with his girlfriend doing it, but I like the fact that the girl was the one who was unrobed. <laughs> now, Sean, now, Sean Ono Lennon, uh, the uh, talented offspring of John yes. and Yoko. Okay, he is, I met with him in Paris recently. He's part of the brainstorm behind this event. Um, he'll be there, hopefully, uh, to participate in this as well. It's going to be in November. So we're restating. But you're not going to be naked, though. I, I might be. Uh, I can't tell you all the specifics, Alex. Brick, but your reporter should be there to capture this event. My reporters won't get cooties. <laughs> your reporters will be enlightened uh, by participating in this epic restaging of this By classic. saying your baboon butt. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, to each his own. I'm just joking, Max. Hey, you're awesome. That's a great idea. Say hi to Sean and all the great folks there. That is 
that is that is very very uh, interesting and uh, it's great to have you here with us and it's great to see so many people picking up on the fact that this is a banker occupation a bankster occupation and not an occupation by capitalism we've left capitalism and that's our uh, the problem we're facing max kaiser thanks for joining us oh it's a pleasure alex jones Wow, long extended interview. What a gigantic InfoWars nightly news we've had tonight. I'm so blind looking into that light, I can't even see where the camera is. Where is it out there? I think it's over there. Now, that's it for InfoWars nightly news, ladies and gentlemen. And Lord Winnell will be back uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, with another extended information warfare packed transmission. If you're not a PrisonPlanet.tv member, you're not catching these when they first air at 7 p.m. or all my films and eight and a half years of material, become a subscriber at PrisonPlanet.tv today and not only get instant and, 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 and more access to this info, but also support the exploding alternative media. We're not like MSNBC that takes banker bailout money secretly, your tax money to fund ourselves. We are funded by you subscribers to this show at PrisonPlanet.tv. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the info war.